In this circuit, we're going to find all the branch currents using one of the most powerful tools in circuit analysis. Nodal analysis. This circuit features two voltage sources and a current source. One of the voltage sources is independent and the other is dependent. It depends on the voltage across a specific resistor. Now let's pick a point to be our reference node. Here's the catch. Neither of the voltage sources is directly connected to ground. That means we can't immediately determine the voltages on either side of them. In fact, no matter where we place our ground, one of the voltage sources will always end up floating, not connected to the reference node. That's where things get interesting. This kind of setup creates what's known as a super node. Sounds intimidating? Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. A super node simply means that when a voltage source sits between two non-ground nodes, we treat those two nodes as one big node when applying Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL. It's a clever trick that lets us skip the headache of trying to find the current through the voltage source directly. All right, let's tackle this circuit step by step. We'll be using the standard eight-step method for nodal analysis. It's logical, it's easy to follow, and once you get the hang of it, it's smooth sailing. And if you ever want a refresher, we've linked a full tutorial in the description. Here's the plan. We'll figure out the voltage at each node, measured relative to a common reference point, usually ground, by applying Kirchhoff's current law. Once we've got those voltages, finding the branch currents is a piece of cake. Ready to dive in? Let's get started. First things first, label all the components and values in the circuit. If they're not labeled yet, now's the time to grab your pencil. But lucky for us, this one's already neat and labeled. So step one, done. On to step two, identify all the nodes and pick one as our reference or ground node. Quick refresher, what's a node? It's any point where two or more components meet. And here's a tip. If two points are directly connected, no resistor or voltage source in between, they count as the same node. Now take a good look at the circuit. How many nodes can you find? Pause if you need to. Got it? There are five. Next, we pick one as our reference. The smart move? Choose the node connected to the most components. It usually makes the math simpler. In this case, I'm picking the one linked to the current source and three resistors. That's a solid choice. But don't stress, no matter which node you choose, your final branch currents will be the same. The only difference is how the equations look along the way. With our reference node set, let's keep going. Next up, assigning voltages to the other nodes. Normally, we'd start with any voltage sources directly connected to ground, since they give us node voltages right away. But in this circuit, none of the voltage sources are tied to the reference node. So we'll label the remaining unknowns as V1, V2, V3 and V4. These are the voltages at each node, measured relative to ground. With those in place, we're ready for the next step, assigning current directions and voltage polarities. Start with the current source. Its direction is already shown by an arrow, so we'll go with that. It's supplying 10 amps in this branch. Now for the resistors, we'll label their currents as I1 through I5. You can choose any direction you like. If you guess wrong, no worries the math will just give a negative answer to show the real direction. One important note, make sure your voltage polarities match the direction you chose for current. That keeps everything consistent and makes the math easier. All right, let's keep going. Step five, time to bring in Ohm's law to write the current equations for each resistor. Quick reminder, Ohm's law says current equals the voltage difference across a resistor divided by the resistance. Let's go resistor by resistor. For the 2 ohm resistor between V1 and ground, I1 equals V1 minus 0 divided by 2. For the 3 ohm resistor between V1 and V4, I2 equals V1 minus V4 divided by 3. For the 6 ohm resistor between V2 and V3, I3 equals V2 minus V3 divided by 6. For the 4 ohm resistor from V3 to ground, I4 equals V3 divided by 4. And finally, the 1 ohm resistor between V4 and ground, I5 equals V4 divided by 1. Now we've got all our resistor currents, I1 through I5, written in terms of the node voltages, V1, V2, V3, and V4. 
With these expressions ready, it's time to apply Kirchhoff's current law and start cracking those voltage values. Time to apply Kirchhoff's current law, KCL. But there's a catch. All four unknown nodes are connected to voltage sources that aren't tied to ground. That's a problem because we can't directly apply KCL at those nodes. We don't know the current flowing through the voltage sources. So here's the trick. When a voltage source connects two non-reference nodes, we treat both ends as a single supernode. By combining them into one big node, we can apply KCL to the whole group without needing to know the current through the voltage source. Let's write our KCL equations for the two supernodes. Starting with supernode A, we've got 10 amps entering and three currents leaving, I1, I2, and I3. Now for supernode B, I2 and I3 are entering, I4 and I5 are leaving. Now let's plug in the current expressions we got from Ohm's law. For supernode A, we said 10 amps are entering, while I1, I2, and I3 are leaving. Using our earlier expressions, I1 is V1 divided by 2, I2 is V1 minus V4 divided by 3, I3 is V2 minus V3 divided by 6. Let's clear the denominators by multiplying through with a common denominator, 6. Doing the math, we get 5V1 plus V2 minus V3 minus 2V4 equals 60. That's our first equation. Now for supernode B, currents I2 and I3 enter, I4 and I5 exit. Substitute again. I2 is V1 minus V4 divided by 3. I3 is V2 minus V3 divided by 6. I4 is V3 divided by 4. I5 is V4. Let's use 12 as the common denominator this time. Simplifying everything, we get 4V1 plus 2V2 minus 5V3 minus 16V4 equals 0. That's our second equation. Two down, two to go. Now we hit another snag. We've used KCL on both supernodes, but that only gave us two equations. And we've got four unknowns. V1, V2, V3, and V4. We need two more equations. Time to look at the dependent source. The voltage source here is labeled as 3Vx, where Vx is the voltage across a certain resistor. Based on the circuit, Vx equals V1 minus V4. So yes, it seems like we're introducing another unknown, but don't worry, we'll keep everything in terms of the node voltages. Here's where the super node helps again. Since the dependent voltage source connects V3 and V4, we can write V3 minus V4 equals three times Vx. And since Vx is V1 minus V4, that becomes three times V1 minus V3 minus two times V4 equals zero. That gives us our third equation. Now let's use the independent voltage source between V1 and V2. That one's simple. V1 minus V2 equals 20 volts. That's our fourth equation. And just like that, we've got four equations and four unknowns, V1, V2, V3, and V4. Time to solve. Now we've got a nice little system of four equations with four unknowns. And here comes the fun part, solving for those node voltages. You can tackle this using matrix methods, substitution, or elimination. We'll go with some good old-fashioned algebra here, just to keep things hands-on. Use whichever method works best for you. Let's start with the fourth equation, V1 minus V2 equals 20. We'll rearrange that to make V2 the subject. V2 equals V1 minus 20. That's our fifth equation. Now we substitute this into equations one and two to eliminate V2. Substitute into equation one, and we get a new version, our sixth equation. Do the same for equation two, and we get equation seven. That leaves us with three equations, equations three, six, and seven, and three unknowns, V1, V3, and V4. Next, we use equations three and six to eliminate V1. That gives us a relationship between V3 and V4, our eighth equation. Now take equations six and seven and eliminate V1 again. That gives us another equation involving only V3 and V4, our ninth. 
From equations eight and nine, we can now eliminate V3 and solve directly for V4. And that gives us V4 equals negative 46.67 volts. Now we back substitute step by step. Plug V4 into equation eight to find V3. V3 equals 173.34 volts. Almost there. Substitute V3 and V4 into equation three and we get V1. V1 equals 26.67 volts. One last step, plug V1 into our earlier equation for V2. V2 equals 6.67 volts. Boom, all node voltages found. It's a lot of algebra, but the trick is to focus on one variable at a time. Eliminate, substitute, and repeat until you've got everything. And if you're more comfortable with matrices, you can definitely use that method instead. Nice and clean, now we're ready to find the actual branch currents. With all the node voltages figured out, we just plug them into the current equations we set up earlier. Let's go. Starting with I1, that's V1 divided by two. So 26.67 divided by two gives us 13.335 amps. Next I2, V1 minus V4 divided by three. So 26.67 minus negative 46.67 over three. That gives us 24.446 amps. Now for I3, V2 minus V3 divided by six. So 6.67 minus 173.34 over six. That gives negative 27.778 amps. The negative sign just means the current flows opposite to our original guess. No big deal. I4 is simple. V3 divided by four, 173.34 over four equals 43.335 amps. And finally, I5, V4 divided by one. That's just negative 46.67 amps. Another negative current, same idea, just means it's flowing the other way. And just like that, we've used nodal analysis to solve for every single branch current in this circuit. Even with super nodes and dependent sources in the mix, the process stays clear and totally manageable if you stick to the method. As you've seen, a little bit of algebra can take you a long way. That wraps it up. No matter how complex the circuit looks, if you take it step by step, nodal analysis will always get you to the answer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.